While on the distant world of Carnelian IV, Obi-Wan Kenobi was faced with one of the strangest armies he'd ever encounter. Hundreds of years prior, the world had been destroyed by a cataclysm that covered the entire surface in a poisonous fog. For most to survive, they traveled to the highest points on the highest mountains, but others weren't so lucky. In the canyons and valleys of the world, a species of humanoids evolved. With charred red skin and long fangs for tearing chunks of flesh in savage bites, these monsters hunted the few humans that survived. And once, while Anakin Skywalker was just a few years into his apprenticeship under Master Kenobi, Obi-Wan was forced to fight them. And what the fabled Jedi Master did in the conflict was perhaps one of his greatest feats. What happened? Join me, your host Lim, as we answer that question and more in today's underrated moment. Before we get going, I wanted to again remind you about our 10,000 subscriber lightsaber giveaway. All you have to do is subscribe, like, and then leave a comment below. Today, I want you to let me know who is your absolute favorite Sith. Don't worry, just write that down below, subscribe, and you'll automatically be entered. Now, on to today's story. The mission to Carnelian IV wasn't going the way Obi-Wan had planned. So far, during his brief time on the surface of the ruined world, the debris orbiting the planet had destroyed his ship, and after meeting two rival factions that feuded over the remaining resources, his apprentice, Anakin Skywalker, ended up kidnapped. Now, Obi-Wan Kenobi was by himself, with only a questionably trustworthy native named Grecker at his side. Together, Kenobi hoped that they would find the source of the emergency beacon which had brought the Jedi here in the first place. And once he found that, Kenobi could figure out where Anakin was taken and save him. But there was a problem. The massive ship that Kenobi was on was crashing. Anakin's kidnappers, a girl named Calera, and a wizened old chieftain named Mother Pran had seen to that with their attack glider. And as Skywalker was bound and ferried to a secret military camp, Kenobi and Grecker were left on board, watching the ground below grow nearer and nearer. As they made their way to a port side doorway, Kenobi grabbed Grecker by the ring of his cloak and shouted, Hold on! With a massive swell of force energy, the Jedi Master leapt from the ship and onto a cliff nearby. Somehow, he had managed to save them both. But now, in the depths beneath the Caledon Sea, Kenobi was faced with a brand new adversary. Armed with ragged, rusted steel machetes, the red-skinned beasts circled around the Jedi Master. These were the corpses. Or, at least, that's what the human natives called them. Like the winged creatures that Obi-Wan had faced earlier in his stay on the world, these bottom dwellers were the result of the poisonous gas that filled the valleys, and the mutations it caused on the humans who settled here long ago. But there wasn't much that made them human, at least... That's what any visitor would think, because the corpses and the corpse leeches of Carnelian IV preyed on humans, and they hoped Grecker and Kenobi would be their next meal. But, with a quick click of his button, Kenobi ignited his blue lightsaber and softly issued a warning. Away now, little ones. Do not force my hand. As Grecker laid beside him, still recovering from the near-fatal crash, he couldn't understand why Obi-Wan didn't just chop them to pieces. The mercenary had already seen just how skilled the Jedi had been in the fights earlier, and it would have been easy work for him to slay them all with a swing of his blade. But Kenobi didn't believe in recklessly killing, not even when his opponents were supposedly mindless beasts. On this day, Obi-Wan decided that a brief demonstration of his power would be enough to scare the monsters into retreating. So he turned towards a sharp, jagged outcropping of mountain stone and quickly swung his lightsaber through it, hewing the granite in two. After the quick display, the corpses and the corpse leeches were mesmerized. Staring at the golden, molten rock that was left behind by Kenobi's weapon, they seemed to realize all at once that Kenobi was more than just a possible meal. He was a warrior that they couldn't beat. All at once, they turned around and fled back to their hidden shelters in between the shadows of the rocks. And Kenobi 
still enraged at the recent kidnapping of his apprentice, Anakin Skywalker, turned to face his new companion, Grekker, and figure out exactly how to get Anakin back. Thanks for checking out this newest story here on Underrated Moments. I hope you got a kick out of it. I really love seeing these old moments of Obi-Wan Kenobi using, you know, using everything besides his mastery of the Force and his lightsaber dueling skills to win scenarios over. Just a little bit before this fight, he used his ability to form Force Bonds to calm the minds and the spirits of a few corpse leeches as they attacked Grekker and Anakin. And here you can see how he managed to convince the corpses not to attack and instead retreat. I think this is probably one of his most overlooked attributes, actually. Whenever you think of Obi-Wan Kenobi, you usually think of the Form 3 Master that was able to defeat Darth Maul and Darth Vader at the height of their power. But here, he shows us a little bit of a different side. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thanks again for checking this out, and I'll see you next time.